Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomat YouTube channel. You got your boys here, Lanny Burt, the Dividend Diplomat. Today, look, let's just put it this way. Lanny and I have been investing for over a decade. And this week, I'm going to be honest with you, I might have heard one of the dumbest merger ideas possible. In this video, we're going to talk about this and share our true feelings but we'll evaluate it and give what we think could be some pros and some cons of this merger potential in the media sector. Man, true colors, true feelings, guys. Before we dive into the biggest, dumbest, possibly worst <laughs> merger, or could it be a good merger? Hmm. Let's smash that subscribe button. Give this video a nice thumbs up, guys. It's Saturday morning. It's for those that are celebrating Christmas, it's Christmas Eve, Eve here, guys, and you're rocking with the diplomats. You got your coffee, guys. You're hanging out with us, and you want to know what the heck are these two dividend investors about to talk about? Because we got mm -hmm. two stocks that mm -hmm. are at the table having a little coffee themselves with the biscotti yeah. and seeing if the espresso was flowing in the right direction. That's right. And for all of you Seinfeld fans out there, happy Festivus. That's a, it's a happy Festivus day. So let's talk through this. I, Lanny and I were together. We were joking around about this. Like, what are we going to do with this one company? And we got home. I open up CNBC and I see this headline. Paramount and Warner Media Discovery, Warner Brothers Discovery, are in potential talks for a merger. And I just stopped for a second. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. You know, when you know when cat litter and dog crap come together as one, you can get cow manure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why do we feel this way? Look, it's been a long road with both of these stocks, in particular with Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, we own them both. It was part of the failed AT&T experiment where they own the, the wireless, the Internet and all the content to distribute it. They spun it out. And it's just been a disaster ever since. The stock price has been in half. Um, they're saddled with debt, even though they're paying it down. Paramount, they were part of the meme stock, and we should have sold it when it jumped up to over $100 per share years ago. But we're here. It's been down. Both stocks have just gotten demolished in 2023, and the prospects for the individual companies aren't looking any better. That's why we're so optimistic about this one. So Paramount cut their dividend earlier. They are down near to date. 12%. They've had a nice coming back from their $10 per share earlier. Now, Warner Bros. Discovery stock, WBD, is actually up 20% this year. Um, sorry, sorry. Let me re rephrase. Since they've spun it off, it's down and gotten demolished. It's just up from that low point. My apologies. That's an instant edit right there. They're up year to date. But up year to day doesn't really mean much when your stock is trading <laughs> at nine or ten dollars a share, as you know, Bert, you're truly, truly indicating there. So they're at the table, they're talking, two big media giants, content kings, you could call them, because there are some really good content on both sides, Paramount and Warner Brothers, Discovery Media. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's what it is. You'd create this massive content library. And the one thing that would make it unique from some of this competition is it also has a lot of the live TV streaming rights too. They have a lot of sports. So you combine them together and both of them have this, this large content king that can compete against some of the big weights that aren't there. And we'll get a little bit more into that when we talk about the pros and cons. Yeah. I mean, again, both have their dominant, um, you know, I guess you call it networks, mm -hmm. uh, dominant movie arenas. And I don't even know how many movie slash show, show slash streaming apps each have. I know you've got <laughs> Paramount Plus, you've got Max. Uh, Max. Is there something else that Warner? It's in Pluto. I think Paramount has Pluto. Um, yeah, they, they, have Pluto. they have Pluto TV. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Is, I don't know if they retired Discovery, that app yet, but there was the Discovery app that was part of this merger too. So, I mean, the content is there. They have it all. They have the, they have it. I mean, I don't know. They've got all the, the network TV, the news, CBS News. You've got CNN, so you can get massive news things. So that's like, that's part of it. And we'll keep getting more into that. But I don't know. 
that's that's really it. One of the other cop, one of the other pieces we read of this um, before we start take talking about those pros and cons, Lanny. Um, this could also start a bidding war. Um, now that these two are looking to come together, there have been rumors that Comcast and has wanted to come to the table to pick up one of these, whether it's Warner Brothers or whether it's Paramount. They could come in swoop and build their empire too. So. This is the beginning of the story, but it is a shot that is fired early on. This is major news. Yeah, there's been some investors inquiring on pieces and parts of each over the past year, um, mm-hmm. you know, in the tunes of billions of dollars. Keep in mind, Paramount itself is market value. Its market cap is about $10 billion, And I think Warner Brothers Discovery, and somebody can fact check me, but you might be looking now, is around 25 to $30 billion. So 30, Warner it's Brothers, 30, it's on the high end of that range. Okay. Yeah. So, so much bigger than Paramount from that standpoint. And again, WBD combined after the AT and T, you know, spinoff with Discovery, um, you know, they have the, the Max, they have the HBO, Cinemax, um, HGTV, obviously the Discovery Channel, CNN, TBS, TNT, Food Network, um, yeah. you know, TLC, the whole DC universe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they have a lot of deep, you know, Cartoon Network, a lot of deep content that just keeps going and you see that you know really on both sides of the party so it's it's all of the past content and upcoming content you know it's to me it's very exciting yeah um, just because there's so much you know mm-hmm. ownership and, here and that's the thing as we move into the pros and cons that was the number one pro for this is exactly what you said, Lanny. You're building this content powerhouse. And that's um what I think would be so cool. They have all this old, this old intellectual property that they can continue to work through. And that's what their competitors are just spending billions of dollars trying to build themselves. Disney is the one that probably has it, but look how much Netflix, Amazon are spending and Apple just to get new content to get people onto their platform, a combined entity of Warner Brothers Discovery Paramount would have all that content. They would have what all these other studios are begging to build right now. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big pro for this merger, guys. If you guys think it's a pro, let us know. Obviously, Paramount and CBS, or Viacom and CBS came together, and then they ended up changing their name to Paramount, um, hence why Mm -hmm. it's Para now, uh, the ticker symbol. Um, so they have obviously all the CBS sports as well, which is a big yeah. kicker there, right? Yeah. For, you know, when these two come together, what are some other pros? Obviously, you would think that there should be some cost dollars, right? Yeah, that would be that would be the hope, right? I mean, they both have their own independent movie studios. They're probably going to keep them, but you can probably share some resources, save some tech, save some marketing spend, save some on some accounting departments. Like you can do a lot of shared resources between the two of them. So you hope since they're so similar, you can eliminate and trim a lot of the fat that each company has to have independently. Absolutely. And then obviously when it comes to negotiation power with other, you know, shows slash networks that they would be able to leverage, you know, Hey, there's so many different pieces to the pie that can be, pulled back, offered in. There's a lot of negotiation tactics that can be used when you're that large with that much content. Yeah. Um, Even for sporting events too, it takes, um, it takes one potential comp- competitor out of the way. So they might get some leverage back on some of these networks. I mean, on some of these leagues. That's true. It's true. Yeah. So those are kind of the big pros that we found here going through this. You have the massive powerhouse studio, a lot of synergies um, that can be realized better pricing power, Oh, and there is a bonus one. This is a selfish one. Um, we would clean, we always joke around about this year how we're trying to trim down our positions. We'd only have one stock. We'd go from two to one. So that's the bonus pro. That's selfishly for the diplomats. You know, you'd get that. The question is, is, is it going to be worth more than the uh, them, them individually? Yes, that's right. So that's the pros. We're optimistic here. But we started this video out thinking this could be one of the dumbest acquisitions ever. So obviously there are a lot of cons that go into it. Landy, what is one big con that you can see right out of the gate here? Well, there's debt, right? Everybody knew about the debt going into both of these. Obviously, come you know, these mergers, you know, happened in 2019, 2020. 
So back then, debt was cheap. Debt was free. Free money, pandemic, let's go. yippee Kai, yay mother effer, die hard style, guys. And Warner Media Brothers Discovery Paramount. voted up with about <laughs> $45 billion of debt. And Paramount, in their pockets, not quite as much, but again, they're smaller, has about $15 billion in debt. So almost very much from their market cap to their debt on both of them. Warner Media, 3X, the size, 3X, the debt. Yeah, I love it. That was one of my favorite quotes from in one of the articles from the analysts. I'm just going to read it, but we'll put it up on the screen. More debt than their market cap. Yeah, the, the deal looks like a, a play for survival at all costs. Both businesses are heavily indebted and it will likely further and it's likely further debt will be needed to be issued to make this deal possible. So more debt. Yeah, 45 plus 15 plus something else gives you a ton of debt. And that's what these companies are fighting so hard to get out of right now. And I'd love to see who owns that interest payment. So guys, you know, that's <laughs> the people that are going to make this transaction happen is probably who's going to be owning it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Good. Yeah, big, big con here to the merger. Let us know if you're afraid about the debt below, guys. Yeah. Um, and then guess what? This competition, though, within the arena change much? Mm, no, it doesn't. Because you're not taking Paramount and selling it to one of the major distributions, the ones that are at the top of people's um, wallets, their credit cards, the ones that you really want, they're not going to Netflix. They're not going to Apple TV. They're not going to Amazon Video, or Amazon Prime. They're just combining themselves. And sure, you can say that Paramount Plus is getting a lot of subscribers. You can say that Max is getting a lot of subscribers, but the reality is, both of them are struggling to gain that market share and earn that spot in your wallet right now. So do you really think combining the two is going to help? It's probably going to raise the fee. And are you really now going to be like, I need this app versus Netflix, Apple TV, Prime Video, which comes free with your Amazon shipping, like your Amazon Prime? Like, are you really going to pay for this combined, this combined service? You know, the interesting part now, it's almost becoming like uh, banking in a way where they're, every bank's trying to fight for your deposit. Mm -hmm. All these streaming players are literally right now trying to fight for your dollars to be your stream of choice. Because, you know, in our household, we've got Disney Plus for free mm -hmm. through a phone plan. We've got, yeah, like you said, Amazon Prime and we've got Netflix. Already, I feel like we don't we don't really watch Amazon Prime much. I don't know about you, Bert. No, I. Um, but Amazon's making an interesting thing because now they're testing out football. They're testing out bringing sports in, so they're getting reasons to go there. The only reason I have Paramount Plus is because I have the Wal I have the Walmart um, Plus subscription, and the Paramount comes free with it. If it wasn't there, I wouldn't spend any money on Paramount Plus. Yeah, I mean, I know sometimes there's some credit card offers to get all your cash back from subscribing yeah. to those. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, I think you still got the same bigs in the streaming. Nobody goes, oh, man, how is Netflix going to compete with Paramount Plus? Nobody's yeah. ever said that. Nobody and then, said, how is, how is Amazon Prime or Apple TV or Disney Plus going to compete with Max? Yeah. Not in the conversation right now. No, but it's it's not. So, I mean, I think it's a, a third con. It, like uh, Going into a third con is like, both these stocks have done terribly. I mean, let's let's be real. Like, they're terrible right now. And that's what we're joking around about. Like, what makes you think that combining these are going to have any better results? Is it like, what makes you think that like they couldn't survive they're independently? Better. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm that's I don't really have much more to say. It's just they're not great individually, so maybe they're a little less sucky together. That's not really yeah. a pro. Like, which, which, you know, well, I think we've kind of seen that with uh, when AT and T and Directv yeah. was like, yeah, let's just do it because it makes so much sense and it just didn't yeah. work out. So you kind of get a little bit of those same concerns here, where you know, if somebody, I don't know, if somebody can unlock costs, that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. to me. If somebody knows how to manage the cost and just really get the right mix of a streaming app at the right price um, that, you know, hey, maybe your Netflix, that's, I don't even know how much it is anymore, 15, 16, 17 bucks a month. 
maybe it gets too high that yeah paramount plus or whatever this combined app if it's like 799 mm -hmm. you know and you get all the old content plus all this new movie content and all the new show yeah. content yeah i mean maybe it's worth it at that point i i don't know no i don't either and that's really it i mean those are our pros our cons here um it's interesting. Maybe what this is doing is setting up the future acquisition that the content library just becomes so large and so robust that the two of them combined are more valuable to Apple or more valuable to Amazon with the Amazon with those trillion dollar um, market caps. Maybe that's one way. Maybe the other option is they're just going to cancel their own independent app thing and just start licensing their content out again to these people. Maybe that's how they truly unlock the value. So that could be one of the options. Yeah, so what Bert says is maybe it's not even an app anymore after they combine and instead they just cut deals with Amazon, Netflix, yeah. Apple, you know, Disney, like, hey, you want our stuff on your app? This is how much it's going to cost. And then they wipe their hands clean of trying to keep uh, keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, they go back to the old school cable model versus versus this whole independent streaming. So everyone. Podcast as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, can't forget about them. So everyone, let us know what your thoughts are. Are you feeling a little bit more optimistic or do you think this is a stupid idea as well um, as us? We did our best to independently evaluate it, to come up with the pros, come up with the cons. I think you can read between the lines. We're not exactly being subtle about it, about how we think this is going to play out in the current structure. But let us know if you like what you if we missed any pros or any cons too. We're very curious what other people are viewing this transaction as. In short, guys, what they probably should do is keep their highest margin, lowest cost content and sell off the rights to everybody else on some of the stuff yeah. and license out the other stuff. But yeah, guys, let us know. Obviously, we're very curious about what can come here. This is all coming down to the end of the year. It'd be wild if something was announced before the new year. Um, and then, hey, yeah. usually somebody ends up paying more for the other. So yeah, you know, I... I saw in there, now that you mentioned that, it just triggered my mind as I was going through this. There's a tax provision for Warner Media Discovery. So it has to happen. It wouldn't happen until at least Q2. And if they do it um, before then, there will be massive tax consequences for Warner Brothers Discovery. It's, it's, I don't know what it is, but it was just, I read that and I'm like, oh, well, it looks like rumors are just going to keep swirling for the next few months. The AT&T hangover, guys. Guys, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Give this video a nice thumbs up. You know, thanks for rocking with us. And Bert, I think you got some parting words for the community here. You're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert the Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.